Hey, welcome back to Overkill Global. I'm Blaine Smith. If you're new here, Overkill Global is our show where we take a look at different metal scenes from around the world. We hope you enjoy. And if you are new, you know, like, subscribe, comment, we got a Patreon, all that normal YouTube stuff. So, business out of the way, let's hop on our E plane, I guess, and uh, fly on over to our next destination. Where is it? Japan. So Japan has a rich history with most metal genres, to be honest, but the whole idea of this show is kind of spotlighting a unique scene that you can only get in one specific place. So, with that in mind, we're gonna be covering Japanese all-girl metal bands. And I'm ready for the rain of comments. Now, normally I would scoff at the concept of all-girl being an entire genre up to itself. It doesn't really mean anything besides that there's girls in the band, but Japan, things are a little different. There is a large prevalence in a lot of Japanese music where the band is not just a band, it is a group with a coherent theme that goes through everything about it. Their stage show, their outfits, even more so than any American band you can think of. There is a presenting of a complete package, and so All Girl presents a little something different there. So that's why we're gonna spotlight on it. Japan's one of those countries that everyone has a bit of a fascination with, and I feel like everybody already knows every single strange fact about Japan. Part of that is because they're sort of looked at as like a sci-fi future. So instead of weird facts, I'm gonna complain about three things that they have that, why don't we have? Number one, toilets, heated seats, integrated bidet, lights, sounds. My butt craves the future. Number two, pachinko. It's pinball combined with a slot machine and you win real money. I want that. And that brings us to number C, all the vending machines. In North America, anytime I want something, I still gotta use my mouth and another person. Wait, oh. Well, after that, there's no more perfect time to do our usual throw to a local expert. Richard Wilson, Japanese music producer, please save me from myself. I'm coming to you guys from Tokyo, Japan. I am the producer for Necronomital. We are a female darkness-themed idol group based out of Tokyo. Musically, we are kind of coming out of a retro area. We play a lot of dark wave, synth wave kind of stuff and also incorporate a lot of metal influences. That's one thing about idol groups is you're not bound by one really stringent kind of uh, genre. The first album I'd like to recommend is actually Jun Togawa. And for me, she's kind of like the er alt idol. I would recommend you check out uh, Tokyo no Yaban or Tokyo Barbarism, which is a really great album by her. And there's a track on there that is called Punk Machine Onna. So she's got the song Mushina Ona, which is actually kind of like an orchestral based, and this is the punk version of that, but it is raw. Like, it's as raw as anything by the Stalin or Inu or any of the kind of punk bands that were playing at that time in Japan. It's very, very powerful. And I think you're gonna find that the alt idol scene in Japan comes more out of punk than it does out of metal. If you're coming into it from baby metal though, it might be a little bit of a gap because baby metal was really kind of bringing in that like traditional like heavy metal sound which you're not going to find in a lot of other idol groups even in modern groups another album i want to recommend is by a two-piece group called fruit pochette the album is uh, crest of evil that was from 2015 so about three four years ago and it's much more indicative of the kind of current metal or metal themed all idol groups here so i hope that's helpful um definitely check out those groups and please also check out necronomital we just put out a new album at the end of uh september i think it's really good we're up on Bandcamp, so give us a listen thanks a lot thank you good sir and now on to my list the idea of this list is it's just kind of a list. It's a grouping. These aren't necessarily the best bands. These are just some bands that I think are cool. And yes, baby metal is in there, but there's also a variety so that you can see that there's more to just baby metal if that's what brought you here. To start things off, we're going all the way back to when I was born, 1986. Because in 1986, a little band called Valkyrie, yes, released a demo called Lamia Shock. This was an independent release, very tiny. It's super awesome. Every time I listen to it, it's just what I imagine it sounds like when I when an 80s Japanese biker gang rolls into town.
They formed in 1985, and then that's the only normal part of their bio. A couple of years later, uh, a new band member joined and then pointed out that that's absolutely not how you spell Valkyrie. They fixed it and changed it to Valkyrie, released another demo in 89, disappeared, reformed in 2015, and then put out an album uh, recently. Typical 80s riffs, galloping drums, and the vocalist Ray has a Japanese accent that comes through that adds a lot of fun to music like this, and the Englishy lyrics and song titles just works so well in metal. No matter what country you come from, every metalhead is guilty of using somebody else's language totally incorrectly because they just like the way it sounds. Blue Dust Nord, anyone? The crackly lo-fi recordings work great with the music, especially because despite that, you can still hear every instrument perfectly, especially the bass. Super cool, super fun, and it's a four song demo, so this super high energy, awesome time never gets old. Five out of five skulls that I absolutely hope are spelled right. Now we're gonna jump a bit ahead to 2004, because in that year, the darkest band on our list, Galhammer, released Gloomy Lights on Hello From The Gutter. So the focus of this band, the theme they're going for is uh, insanity. And boy, do they nail that, especially in the vocals. <laughs> the sounds in this album feel like they came from the cutting room floor of Juon. The whole album starts with a slow minute and a half long croak. Vivian Slaughter and Mika Penetrator, thumbs up names, seem to always step on each other's weird groans with more weird groans of their own. It's just like, it's awesome. There are two types of songs on the album. There are slow, grueling crawls and quick, frantic, crusty jams. It really helps add a manic energy to it. If you enjoy Hellhammer or the weird stuff that Celtic Frost got up to, I really think this will be totally up your alley. So that's why I'm giving it four and a half out of five Oni Skulls because these gals must absolutely be weird demons. So at this point in the video, you might be feeling like you got clickbaited. I came here for frilly dresses, damn it. Well, don't worry, we're jumping ahead to 2010 with something a little more what you might have expected. We've got Aldius with Deep Exceed on Bright Star. So formed in 2008, they made their name through a combination of the word ultimate and melodious. If you're wondering why it starts with an A, it's because, well, it's because of the same reason your tattoo says uh, butt man instead of lone samurai. They play that style of power metal that sounds like it's opening up an episode of Naruto. Let's have a listen. One thing I think is really fun about this album is they use an intro track. <gasps> they use an intro track well? Yeah. They use an intro track well to subvert expectations. It kind of starts with what you would expect of a J-pop album with some piano and ah, And then the first song kicks in and it's like some hard riffs and double bass work. Just full steam. Now there is a J-pop vibe to the whole thing, but there is also all the elements of a great power metal band in here as well. You've got technical prowess that's totally up to snuff, Everything clips along at a great tempo. They avoid some of the more wankiness on the technical side, but I do think that helps keep the catchy, poppy vibe to what's going on. And they don't use keyboards, uh, unlike a lot of power metal bands and pop bands. And I think that helps balance the J-pop elements and prevent cavities from long-term listens. 
Rami is a really great singer too, but despite the fact that she can sing really well, she frequently chooses to sing in her lower register, which I think is a great choice for balance. And it also means that when she does have those flare-ups, they punch a lot harder. There is one poppy piano ballad, but honestly, it's pretty rare that even my favorite power metal bands don't slide one of those in on me and I have to press skip anyway. So, totally forgiven. I do think this is a great gateway band for maybe someone that's younger that is thinking about metal and kind of likes it and a good way to get them in. And that's why I give it three and a half out of five skulls that are very pretty, but also very talented. Treat them with respect. So, we now come to 2014 and probably the band that's bringing us all here. We've come to Baby Metal. We're gonna do their first album, Baby Metal, which was released on BMD Fox Record. So this group is pretty infamous at this point. More created than formed in 2010 by producer Koba Metal, they've gone on to do uh, quite well for themselves. Some have derided it as a commercialization of metal culture or whatever, but let's also keep in mind that Slayer announced 2019 dates for their final tour a couple of months ago, so all of our heroes aren't exactly sequestering themselves to a satanic Buddhist temple subsisting on 12 grains of rice a day to maintain cult purity. Let's take a deep breath, relax, and listen to some crazy goddamn music. So Baby Metal are actually kind of two groups. You have the three singer performers, and then you have the metal band. So technically, I guess it's not quite an all-girl group. But the goal of the band doesn't even really seem to be to blend J-pop and metal together so much as compare and contrast the two styles. The thing that made this record such a phenomenon is that the styles do work really well alongside each other. J-pop is crazy and hectic and metal, duh. BPMs on J-pop can get exceedingly high, as anyone who burned out their legs at an Asian arcade playing rhythm games can attest to. Orbit at Pac Mall. And yeah, you really don't have to change that much about J-pop to kind of make it have a happy life beside a metal band. On this record, we have a crazy amount of different styles. Da, groove, thrash, brutal, new, dubstep, hip hop. There's Honestly, a part that sounds like Don't Worry, Be Happy. It's all over the place. It's a really cool exploration of a bunch of different popular music styles all at the same time. Now, as a result, it can be a little hard to maintain consistency. They aren't always throwing 180s, but I feel like they're winning more legs than not. That's why this band easily gets four out of five skulls that are like a bunch of different skulls all in one, man. And thus, we get to almost today with 2017. This is the last band on our list and a really special one, I think. We've got Love Bites with Awakening from the Abyss on Victor Records. Formed in Tokyo in 2016, they're of the thrashy, heavy vibe to power metal. The songs alternate kind of between a mega deathy vibe and a power questy vibe. Pretty much what you're gonna have is two types of songs. One, you have a giant monster enter sword in your hand and you're fighting some big thing, or two, you kick the dick off that big thing and you're just standing up there on a big old mountain, just scoping it out. On the technical side, this album is a blast. You've got guitarists Midori and Miyako cranking out awesome riffs left and right, and when there is a solo, 
they managed to bridge the gap between fun and technically impressive that I find a lot of guitarists struggle with. And because they aren't afraid of mixing that aggression into the sound, and also maybe because she's one of the band's founders, Miho's bass actually gets to come out and play, and it's a lot of fun. Fellow founder Haruna's drumming is a total blast. There is a pace to it that is constantly galloping along, and it really worms its way inside your body, so you're at least mildly headbanging along to every song, if not getting the full body into it. I love, love, love this record. No complaints, nothing I'd change. Easy, five out of five, let's say Valha Zack Skulls. It's a monster under dragon. So, what have we all learned? What I hope we learned is what we knew all along, that even in Japan, grouping girl groups together just because they're full of girls is a little dumb. Because women are all unique and individual human beings with different wants, expectations, needs, and taste in music. That's kind of why at Banger, we don't normally do this. If a girl puts out a cool record, we just feature it because it's a cool record. So, I hope you enjoyed this. And hey, if you're in the mood for more, we still have shout outs. So, up first, we've got Yellow Machine Gun, Father's Golden Fish. It came out in 1996. It's kind of an older punk metal vibe. It's super cool. You should check it out. So, we already featured one Galhammer record, but their second record is also awesome and a little bit different. So, check out Ill Innocence. It came out in 2007 on Peaceful Records. Great label. Give them your support. And if you want more of the J pop power metal vibe, we've got Mary's Blood with Bloody Palace. It came out in 2015 on Victor Records. And last, we have Doll's Box with two X's and a dollar sign for the S with high spec with another dollar sign for the X, which came out in 2017 also on Victor. So that's been the video. Thanks so much. See you for another Overkill Global. Peace. Blood of the brave Fight those who escape Unification or death Take it to our